Okay. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Um, it's great to see some people here, and thank you to everybody who knows how scared I am to be up here and has come to support me. I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, I'm Susie, and I'm going to just talk you through the phone box and how it came about and um, how I turned it into a printmaking studio and what's happening next, because I just thought it was an interesting thing to, to share with you. So let's go. Um, the project originally began as uh, tackling loneliness, really. The image that you see here with the lovely sky, that's, I, I, I live there. That's where I live up in Billsdale in North Yorkshire. Um, and in that area, loneliness is a massive issue. And when we think of loneliness, we think of it about the elderly. But loneliness is not just an issue with the elderly. Really teeny tiny children, right the way through to the elderly, can suffer loneliness. And in 2019, I became really aware of the impact that this was having on families, because a lot of families, um, the elderly people in those families, would turn into alcohol as a way of combating loneliness. And I was like, this, this isn't good. And that happened in my own personal family. I was like, this, this can't keep going. I've got to do something about this. And one day I was out in the country and I was having a little look around and I kept seeing the phone boxes that are everywhere. Hands up if you've seen a phone box. See, they're everywhere. And I was thinking, that maybe there's something I can do here. Maybe I can actually do something with that phone box to tackle loneliness. So I had a crazy idea to put a printmaking studio inside a phone box, inside a village, to entice people out because guess what? It's really hard to find lonely people because they're lonely, they're not out there. So I hit on this idea and I thought, okay, I'll put this in, in the villages. I'll put the phone boxes in the village, uh, the printmaking studios in the village phone boxes. Problem, the phone boxes in the villages are disappearing. I so I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it everywhere. And a friend said to me, well, wouldn't it be brilliant if you had a phone box that could go places? So I looked up Doctor Who's number, and unfortunately it wasn't available. So I thought, okay, what I really need is a phone box that I can build and that can really go anywhere. Challenge accepted. So I did. The bridge that you see there, that phone box on top of the bridge, it's not an edited picture, it's real. That's the transporter in Middlesbrough, and that's the, the phone box that's here on site. We took it up on top of the transporter, just for the crack, really, just to say that we could. And we also took it to lots of beaches and things. This is in the process of thinking, can we do this? So yeah, I cracked on and thought, right, let's, let's build one. Let's go ahead and, and actually build a phone box and see if it can be done. And I worked with a, a local company. We came up with some designs. And thank goodness for Arts Council. Woo, Arts Council gave me some money. Um, and I put together the project to tackle loneliness and um, got on and built built the project. Um, yeah, foam box. Obviously, a traditional foam box is made of very heavy stuff and takes a crane to move it. So this had to be transportable. So the foam box that's on the site here comes apart into six pieces. So there's the base, the top, and the four sides. I'm dismantling the foam box between half five and six tonight. So if you want to see how it's built and how it dismantles, come around at that time and you can, you can have a peek and see how it, how it works. And you can help me lug it into the van. That would be great. So this, this is it. This is the shell. Um, it's just a soft wood. Um, and um, I've coated it with a particular type of resin to make it waterproof when it's outside, um, hopefully. <laughs> so far, so good. But what I really wanted to tell you about today was how it became this traveling art studio. So Teesside Hackspace is my local Hackspace. Let's hear it for Hackspace. Woo! Woo! Um, and they're brilliant, the guys at Hackspace. Now remember, I'm an older woman, sadly, and I have very little to do with technology. I'm a printmaker. I sit in my studio and I carve away at little blocks of teeny tiny tools most of my days. That's what I do. And suddenly I had this vision in my head that I wanted to turn this phone box into this traveling art studio. Hmm, how? Well, I don't know. Um, so down I went to Hackspace. And I was like, well, this is, this is what I want to do. How can we do it? So you can see on the image there that um, at, when we first launched it, this is what it was like. Um, there was an information panel there 
which I can't believe how easy that looks, the, the panel with the numbers to, you know, to this side. Um, but getting to that point was really difficult. A really a lot of workshops and focus groups to understand um, how how that would work, and everything in there except the phone was made at Hackspace. Everything in there. So we have the little blocks that hold the papers. We have the workbench. We have the ink box, and right at the front there, that funny looking white thing with the green tabs on top, that's a, an actual printing press that really works. It's an open source project and it's open press project if you want one it's absolutely brilliant and that's 3d printed and i've got it with me um, unfortunately some hurly burly guy didn't realize that turn clockwise meant go like that and not go like that so he pulled the handle off a few months back so it, the one i've got doesn't work but come and look at it anyway it's cool um, so yeah hackspace really helped me to um, develop it as a concept and to make it real so to take this idea that was in my head and to actually go, well, what if you do this? What if you do that? Let's do this. The other thing that's inside the original box is you'll see <laughs> that the phone box has the world's biggest solar panel on the back. Um, it weighs a ton. It's ridiculous. Honestly, it would, it would just power this entire campsite. It's ridiculous. And what that does, um, not today, unfortunately, but what that does is it enables the box to be completely accessible. So you can see there, everything in there, you, you have to be able to read English, you have to be able to read, um, or you have to be able to understand English if I'm there, or hear if I'm there. But what if you can't do any of those things? Then how accessible is that to you? What if you're blind? What if your main language isn't English? You, how do you then make that print? If I'm not standing there and I can't guide you through, how do you make that print? So the box... Um, and I'd love to explain what these gadgets are to you, but Teesside Hackspace have helped me understand that as well at the minute. Um, but basically, it has an amp in there, and it has speakers, and um, the phone um, is set to ring. Um, and that's to attract attention when people are walking by and I'm not there. So people go, huh? oh, it's not just a phone box. And they'll pick it up, and they'll step in and hopefully do something creative, rather than have a pee in the corner. That would be nice. So the, that, that, was, that was the whole point. So the sound... Um, drops down so you pick up the phone and you it, it comes through the speaker on the phone but also the sound drops down and around and I'll tell you in a minute how I've gone a little bit wacky crazy on that and what the new boxes are going to do and that was all through Hackspace the entire creation of that was was through my local Hackspace thanks Jim for now. but what I've done today is I've deliberately left out the techie stuff coming here which might be a bit weird thinking that I'm coming to this amazing festival and it's all about technology and amazing sci-fi stuff to me. But the reason I've done that is to show people, bring you back to basics, bring you back to creation, bring you back, well, not creation because I'm not God, but bring you back to a point of creativity so you can actually have an experience of making something already in the phone box, and this is what I hear all the time. So many people step inside that box and go, oh, I can't do anything creative, I can't draw, I can't make. Five minutes later, they're going, oh my God, I made this. I've seen it over and over again. It brings me such joy to see people make these little prints and to keep them and take them home or share them or bin them, it doesn't matter. If you make them, that's the point. It's absolutely lovely. So what I've done now, and this is what I'm interested in here at EMF, is my, my making process, you can see on the screen there, those tools are yeah big, just little teeny tiny tools like this, um, little miniature, very sharp points. I've, I've got no finger ends left because you're forever slipping as a printmaker and cut your hands off. Um, and that's, that's the traditional way to make a line or cut, is you do your drawing, all the drawings you can see are mine in the box. You transfer the drawing to the block and then you carve it away so that the image is left in relief on the block, raised up on the block, okay? And lino is the traditional material that's used for that, okay? Well, it's not actually, because the traditional material that's used is way back when, um, in very, very ancient times, the Japanese, you'll have seen ancient Japanese wood blocks. So, here am I at Hackspace thinking, this is fantastic, we've built this amazing phone box. Suddenly, 
the phone box took off. Well, no, it didn't. It's not a rocket. It didn't take off. But suddenly what happened was the interest in the phone box took off and people wanted it because people realized after the Loneliness Project that that small space really did have a big impact. Truly, it really does. It's a way of reaching people that you can't reach. It's a way of engaging with people that struggle to engage with, purely because it can pop up at a bus stop, it can pop up in a chip shop, it can pop up anywhere at a great festival. So people suddenly became very interested in it and wanted to book it. <laughs> I was over the moon, because as an artist, this suddenly gave me an income stream that I was struggling to have. Hello, we've all been through lockdown, and artists in the room will particularly understand just how harsh that's been. When work disappears like that, it's wonderful then to come out of lockdown with a project like this and to be able to keep developing it and earn a living, let's be honest. So, here I was at Hackspace, and now the demand has grown for the box, and suddenly people are saying, we'd love to have the box, we'd love it to do this. P.S., can you make us some artwork that's particular to our theme? And I'm going, yeah, give me two weeks. And they're going, well, actually, it's the weekend. I'm like, what? back to Hackspace, I'm like, how can I make the printing blocks really quickly? So we investigated this, and we, obviously we came up with ways to actually make these printing blocks. So instead of the tools, I've now shifted over into using lasers, the laser cutting machine, um, to make the blocks. And as luck would have it, I did a project um, on a farm, and they wanted me to create a walking trail around the farm and I was like, well, actually, we could really deal with laser cutting these. And actually, the cost of laser cutting these is through the roof. But have you seen this machine over here? If you buy me this machine, <laughs> I can then actually make these for you. So I actually was able to purchase a very small laser cutting machine of my own. It's, it's, it's all right. It's one of these Chinese imports. I'm sure a lot, lots of you have seen them. It does the job just. Um, they're about 400 quid to buy, so they're a really good investment. So I'm going back to the olden days because the printing blocks that I was creating through Hackspace, the lino cut, the stuff is absolutely hideous. God knows what it's made of, but it's just going to ruin the planet in three blocks, I'm sure. Three little blocks and that's it. Three trees have gone. And I'm like, I can't use this. I can't justify the use of this material. So I've gone back to wood. So I've gone back to the, do you remember I said about the Japanese woodcuts? So I'm just way back then, way back in history, using all this amazing technology. And my printmaking friends are up in arms. They're going, oh, you heathen, what are you doing? You know, you're not a purist. You're not using the true methods anymore. And I'm like, hey, like I said to some folks yesterday, if Da Vinci was in this room, guess what he'd make a beeline for? He'd have a 3D laser cutter, he'd have the works, he'd have absolutely everything. Call me Da Vinci. <laughs> So that's where the project's gone, and that's the journey that I've been on. And the phone box now goes out. It's here. Um, come down and make some prints if you haven't already. And I can see most of the people in this room, thank you for coming, have supported me by making a print already. Come back and make some more. You deserve it. So where am I going next? Chatterbox is my next thing. And Chatterbox is I'm now building more phone boxes, but I'm using absolutely 100% recycled materials. These will be made of recycled carpets and recycled industrial waste. And that's what we'll make the standard form with. Through these, I'll be creating imagination workshops in schools, linking schools up with scientists and linking schools up with engineers. Um, I'll be, the boxes, the new boxes, have technical innovation inside of them. The windows are screens, so when you say a particular word, the screens light up. So I'm talking to various hospitals in the NHS and we're looking at dementia programs through these new boxes. Um, it's just really exciting, but I'm still going around and popping up with my phone box because that's the truth of where I'm at. And if you'd like any more information, I'm in a phone box down there, come and talk to me, and there's my contact details. Thanks very much.